hi and welcome back kids uh, I hope this is our last video but it may take me two so be patient uh, we are talking about the laboratory we just discussed accuracy we're moving into precision precision is sometimes called the reproducibility now we will do accuracy more than we will do precision and the main reason is is you need three or more pieces of data before you can discuss precision because precision is how close repeated measurements are to one another and so it, you can't really talk about how close two are unless you discuss it relative to a third so we need at least three to discuss this all right now if we compare these little um, targets here and we can use the terms that we've discussed this one is the best it's precise because the points are close together and it's accurate because it's dead on that that centers referencing the true value so to speak all right now if we look at this one they're all close together so this is considered precise but it's not accurate and so it's not considered good data really and so we would want to look at the piece of equipment and see why it is reproducibly far off of what it should be this is neither accurate nor precise so it's not accurate nor is it precise if we did an average of these you know it's way out here the average we want to be on the center as best as possible. Now these, if you took the average of these values, this is accurate, but they're relatively far away from one another compared to this cluster here. So I would say that that's accurate but not precise, neither accurate nor precise. This is the best that's both precise and accurate. Okay? Now, what kind of equipment will we be using? the closer the range of the markings of a piece of glassware typically the more precise and frankly accurate it is now there is one exception to that and I'll mention that in, in at least in class hopefully by the end of this video alright so if we look at this this has no markings so if we want to look at what's the most precise and what's the least and so let's number four as the most precise and we'll number one as the least this has no markings on it we really have no clue what we're measuring here All right. I would say Erlenmeyer's and Beaker's are really a tie uh, Erlenmeyer's and Beaker's you want to think of not as measuring these aren't really measuring tools if you were told to add about a hundred mls you could use a beaker but they're not really measuring. These are more holding vessels. If you think of them as holding vessels or reacting vessels, that, that's a better way to think of a beaker and an Erlenmeyer flask. Our best here is the graduated cylinder. Okay, Because relative to its size, its maximum capacity, it has a lot of markings. Okay, a lot of in-between measurements for us to evaluate. Now, because different equipment has different levels of precision, we can't report the values the same. So what we're going to use, we want to report only what is reasonable in terms of the measurement. And that which we call reasonable or meaningful are called significant figures. Okay. So, to find your significant figures, you always measure all your certain. Your certain is going to be defined by the lines. So your certain digits have a line that tells you, I know for sure that I'm above or below this. All right. And then we report one uncertain digit. All right. So in this case, you notice that the large markings represent one milliliter. 
Notice that the smaller markings then would be equal to a tenth of a milliliter. So I know to a tenth of a milliliter the certainty of my measurement. So that's certain, that's certain, and that's certain. This eight, if you look, we always measure from the bottom of the meniscus. Somebody estimated between the lines, and that's accepted. But I couldn't write down, oh, my measurement is 25.67439. That, that implies I used a much better measuring device than I did. All right, that's silly. Nobody can measure that. But you can estimate between lines. And it's accepted. Scientists, scientists understand that your last digit is an estimated digit. So on a balance, you're going to see the last digit fluctuate. And you're just going to kind of grab an average number there. And you're going to estimate that last digit, and that's perfectly acceptable. All right. Now, if you are estimating, you know what, I think the bottom of the meniscus is dead on that line. Well, you're estimating that it's dead on that line, and you have to add a zero. So, you've got a line for the ones, you have a line for the tenth, that means you report to the hundredths. Always one more than what the line defines. Okay. Now, um, not reporting values to the correct significant digits and with units will cause you to lose points. It's an important laboratory skill. All right. And also beware of glassware. I, I used this word before, but let's use it. When we're dealing with water, water always has a, a downward curving meniscus, and we always measure along the bottom of that meniscus, not up at the top, but along the bottom of the meniscus. All right. Now, we want to read the ruler to the correct number of significant figures. So to define, do that first, we have to define what each line means. Now the unit is given to us in centimeters. So we know for sure the ones place. So if the big lines represent ones place, that means each of these little lines represents a tenth of a centimeter. And that means we're going to report all values, even ones on the line, all values have to rep be reported to the hundredths place. Okay? Because we always go one more than what the last line defines. Okay? So A is below 1, so A is going to be 0 point. It's above the 5. I know that for sure. And I, I know it's less than 0.6 and above 0.5. I'm going to estimate that as 2. Okay, You might have estimated it as 3, and that's just fine. Let's go ahead and do C. C is above the 1, so I know the 1 for sure. I know it's above 0.6 and below 0.7, and I'm going to call that 1.68 centimeters. You might have called, called that 1.69 centimeters, and that's okay. Let's do D right here. Now, I know it's above 2 and below 3. I see it as a 5, and since for, to, for my eye it looks like it's right on the line, I'm going to put a 0 there because I have to report to the hundredths place. Okay? So, let's take a look at this. This is a graduated cylinder, and I want you to notice the difference between a burette and a graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinders are designed to contain burettes you read to deliver. So burettes, the scale is down. Graduated cylinder, the scale is up. Now, the big line is 30. I know it's above 30, so let's do A. Let's do this line. Let's say the liquid was here. All right, it's less than 40, but greater than 30. These are 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the 1's place. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I know it's above the 7 and below the 8. Now I have to estimate. I'm going to call that 37.8. 
and we don't want to forget our units. All right. Now, um, for B, I know it's above the 30 but below the 40. It looks to me like it is right on the 5. So I'm going to put a 0 there because I am estimating that it's on the line. Now, with a burette, what we're going to do is you take your initial volume reading. So this is my initial volume reading. These are the tens place. So these are ones. I'll tell you our burette reads better than this. So these are the ones place. So this is five. So this looks like it's 15. I think it's right on the line. So I'm going to call it 15.0 milliliters. Now I'm going to release this amount. We do that because there's a stopcock at the bottom that allows us to, to release our liquid out the bottom of it. And I'm going to release it down to here. So my volume 2 is it's still above 10 but below 20. That's the 8, so I think it's 18.3 milliliters. Now, the difference, we use that delta to mean difference. So the volume or the difference in, it's always my final minus my initial. And so I delivered 3.3 milliliters into whatever holding vessel or flask I had below. Okay, that's it for this chapter. I know this was a longish video, but I wanted to just finish up this concept. So until class, this is signing off, kiddos.